Today is Thursday, it's May the 12th, 2022, and the title of today's devotional from heartofashepherd.com is Three Good Things You Should Embrace. Now our scripture reading is Lamentations chapter 2 and chapter 3. Now our brief study of Lamentations of Jeremiah continues today with Lamentations 3 being the primary focus of this devotional, and uh, I will also suggest a brief outline for Lamentations chapter 2. Now, in Lamentations chapter 2, just as a background, remember that Jerusalem is destroyed. And so Jeremiah, our prophet, continues to lament the calamity of Jerusalem and observed how the Lord had, and I quote in verse 1 of chapter 2, covered the daughter of Zion, that be in Jerusalem, with a cloud in his anger. Now, knowing that David had pronounced the temple in First Chronicles 28 and verse 2 as, and I quote, the footstool of our God, the prophet bemoaned in verse 1 that the Lord remembered not his footstool in the day of his anger. Now, though it was Nebuchadnezzar whose army destroyed Jerusalem, Jeremiah left no doubt it was the fierceness of God's judgment that devoured the people. In fact, as you read verses 2 through 5, you, you read that the rebellion of the people had moved the Lord to literally become the enemy of his wayward people. Now, all Jerusalem was a scene of destruction as the city and its temple laid in ruins. It was the Lord who gave the altar, the temple, and the palaces into the hand of the enemy in verse 7. As Jeremiah looked upon the city, he observed in verse 9 that the gates of the city were sunk into the ground. Her king and her princes are among the Gentiles, literally they are captives, and that the law is no more. Now, Lamentations 2 and verses 10 through 14 turn the focus from the city of Jerusalem and the king to the sorrows that the people had suffered. In verse 10, the leaders of the city sat in silence as they mourned the deaths and destruction that was all about them. In verses 11 through 13, Jeremiah was so overcome with grief that his tears failed and his heart ached as the city he loved was ravaged by famine. Notice the closing thoughts of chapter 2, that Jeremiah reminded the people how it was their sins that brought them to a state of ruin and sorrow. The prophet declared, the Lord hath done that which he had devised. He hath fulfilled his word. And overcome with grief and hunger in the city, mothers turned to cannibalism as they, in verse 20 we read, they did eat their fruit, that is their sons and daughters. In verse 21, the young and the old laid in the streets, and there were none to bury them. Now, Lamentations chapter 3, as you would open your Bible and study, you would see that it takes on a very personal tone for Jeremiah. It's the longest chapter in this small prophetic book. But the prophet had lived to see all that he had prophesied against Judah come to pass. Left behind with the poor, Jeremiah gazed upon a scene of devastation. The temple was destroyed. The palaces and the homes of the city laid waste, and the walls of Jerusalem were fallen. And so Lamentations chapter 3 is a testimony of the prophet's afflictions. You'll notice in verses 1 through 19, in his sorrows, Jeremiah confessed the afflictions he carried for the suffering of his people. He, in verse 2, felt alienated from God. In verses 2 through 5, as though the Lord had turned against him. In verse 6 through 8, he prayed, but it seemed that God did not hear his prayers. He felt trapped, abandoned, and wounded in heart, as you look at verses 9 through 13. He was scorned by his people and overcome with feelings of helplessness. In verse 19, he despaired of life until his focus turned to the Lord. Now, the balance of this chapter, Lamentations 3, beginning at verse 21 through 36, you're going to notice that in the midst of his sorrows, Jeremiah expressed his faith in words that would later inspire the hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness. He writes in verse 22 through 23 of Jeremiah chapter, or Lamentations 3, It is of the Lord's mercies that were not consumed, 
because his compassions fail not. In verse 23, they, that is the mercy and the tender compassions of the Lord, are, are new or renewed every morning. Great or sufficient is God's faithfulness. Now, Jeremiah remembered the Lord's mercy and faithfulness, and he declared in verse 25, the Lord is good, good unto all them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. Now you'll notice in verse 25 that there were two conditions to knowing and resting in the goodness of the Lord. The first condition was that those who know the goodness of the Lord must wait for him. Jeremiah's counsel to any that are in distress is wait and literally hope in the Lord. The second condition to those who would rest in God's goodness is that we must also seek him. Now, what does it mean to seek the Lord? It means to seek and to obey him. You see, you seek the Lord when you read, meditate, and you obey the Lord's word. Now, closing thoughts for you this morning or today, whenever you listen to this. In closing, I invite you to consider three things that Jeremiah described as good. The first one is found in verse 26. It is good to both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. Hope is more than an emotional or mental aspiration. It is a practice of a disciplined heart and soul. So hope anticipates that God hears and will answer prayer. We hope in the Lord. Why? Because he is faithful to his word and his promises. Number two, it's not only good to hope and wait, but it is good to quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. Wait without complaining. Wait for the Lord to answer prayer in his time. And then finally, in verse 27, it is good for a son, a youth, to bear the yoke and burden of of manhood. In other words, in the midst of his afflictions, Jeremiah acknowledged it was a good thing for young men to bear the yoke of manhood with all of its challenges, its trials, and disappointments. You know, life can be difficult and even harsh, but a satisfying, rewarding life requires both discipline and endurance. What about you today? Will you hope, seek, obey, and trust the Lord? If you want to rest in His goodness, you must do that. Thank you for joining me today, and God bless.